Good morning, everyone. Uh, very warm welcome to the fourth and, and final of this season, anyway, Moreno Power Power Hour Tasting. Um, I can see the group filling up as we uh, as we talk. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined us for the first three, um, which are still still available. They're on YouTube now. If uh, if you happen to miss them, you can catch up on them. Um, we had um, first week we had New Age Spain, uh, then Moreno favourites, and New Kids on the Block last week. And today uh, a little bit different actually. Um, it will be made by Moreno. Um, so just to confirm, the wines you should have with you today are the Blockhead Chenin Blanc, uh, Quebanta Pinot Grigio, the uh, Dariod Côte de Rome Village. And some of you will have the Helium Q Shiraz Matara as well. Don't worry if you don't. Um, I will talk you through that in a bit as well. That is hot off the press. Um, just arrived uh, a week ago, actually. So as I like say, don't worry if you haven't got that. If you have, great. Um, taste along um, in the last segment today. Um, otherwise, I'm sure you'll get to catch up with it soon. Um, and like the last few tastings, this is really just supposed to be really relaxed. Um, no more than an hour today, we promise. Um, webinar kind of format. Um, the session is recorded again and will be will be popped on to YouTube over the next couple of days. Um, and please do ask any questions at the bottom as well. Um, we've got two fantastic winemakers on with us today. Um, pop them in either the chat or the Q and A at the bottom. And there's at least two or three of us picking up on those and we'll we'll relay those onto onto the winemakers. Um, so just to introduce Moreno um, again. Um, my name is Mike. I look after the North Moreno. Hamish is on the call here today as well. He looks after sales as a whole and in Scotland. Uh, Simon, who looks after the South. Pete, who looks after London. And then we have Harry, who is our operations man. And oh, and by the way, shout out to Harry, who's done all the tech for these tastings. Um, at least from our part, our, our side, it's been fairly smooth, such wood. And then we have Nick as well, who we might actually get to, to see if we can tempt him out um, later on one of the calls as well. Um, so yeah, like I say, please do ask questions as we go, pop them at the bottom. So on today is Made by Moreno. Um, what do we mean by this? Um, this is, a, a selection of wines, a side of our portfolio that we're, we're incredibly lucky to have a Moreno. Um, and it really comes about through, through our ownership and through um, the partnerships we have. Um, and I don't want to talk about this for too much because I know we're here to, to taste some wines, but I th think it's an area we don't always communicate as well as we should, um, but hopefully is really useful for, um, for our customers to know and to, to really inspire the confidence in these wines as well. Um, so we are lucky enough to be part of an independent group called In Vino, um, from which we can source wines from, from all over the world, really, um, at, at really competitive prices. Um, and in this category, we're talking about, you know, real fighting price wines that make up the bulk of what is sold and consumed in the UK. Um, and with, with Moreno in particular, being Spanish specialists, that often manifests itself as non-Spanish wines and particularly New World well, world wines outside of Spain and a bit of Italy where we've got deeper, deeper roots. Um, and where we go a little bit further and where it becomes made by Moreno and own production, I use those two kind of interchangeably, is where we source from growers with, with long-term contracts, with quality in mind, and then we have an in-house winemaking team who will um, ensure we get the quality and the style that, that we need and that we, we expect really. Um, and like I said, we're going to talk to, to a couple of those um, fantastic teams today and they'll make final, they'll do the final blending and final adjustments and things like that. Um, how the detail and logistics of that look varies from, from country to country. Um, and we'll show a couple of different examples today, but the, the whole aim is really to get the best, best wine we can at the best price we can as well. Um, so, in essence, so in essence, it's about the ultimate value um, I'm, I'm always certainly very confident to say hand on heart that these, um, I think these are the best wines you can get at the, set, the prices, the points they're at. Um, so enough about that from me. Let's talk about, let's talk about some wine. And I'm really pleased to introduce Rhino, who joins us from South Africa. Um, I'm really, uh, really thankful for him joining us because he's right in the middle of harvest actually as well. So he's a very busy man. 
um, but he's got 10 minutes to talk to us today. Good morning, Rhino. How are you? Morning, Mike. Good and you guys. Good morning, <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, no, thank you for joining us. I, I was just saying that you're very busy with Harvest at, at the moment, South Africa. Um, so we um, we represent two two wines um, that Rhino makes for us, um, Blockhead Shenan and Blockhead Shiraz. And we're, we're tasting some of the Blockhead uh, Shenan today. So I was just hoping you could could talk us through um, a bit behind bit behind that wine and uh, how it's made, et cetera. That'd be yep. fantastic. Mm. Yes, so um, like you said, um, from my side, thank you for having me. Um, and from a very stormy South African morning, uh, we got a thunderstorm in last night. So I said to them, please bear me with me if the connection isn't great. But uh, yeah, I'm here uh, as uh, Marino's winemaker for the Block H and Blanc, um, a wine which, is, which uh, I'm very passionate about. So just to take you quickly through where the grapes are harvested and how we do things here. So um, the Chenin Blanc grapes for Blockhead is, has an origin called the Swartland. I'm not sure if everyone is, is um, um, familiar with the regions in South Africa. So Swartland is on the western coast of South, Southern Africa. It's also part of our coastal region. So, um, it uh, basically composes of de um, decomposed granite soils, uh, which is very special about this region is it gets the cold influence from the Atlantic oceans in the evening. So you get a good cooling effect in the afternoon. Um, basically it's all, uh, most of the vines are all dryland bush vine um, Chenin Blanc blocks. Um, with very low yields and small berries. Um, I'll, I always say a uh, small berry gives you a big taste. So um, what's also very interesting about this region is even I know everyone knows or for those of you who doesn't know, um, we had severe droughts in the Western Cape, in especially between 18 and 19. And um, these vines are dry grown, so they tend to have a bigger um, root system. So they didn't, the, it, the drought didn't have such an impact on the wines, on the vines, but uh, it had an immense impact on the quality. So we, we get a very good quality from, from the Swartland area. Um, yeah, so um, harvesting the grapes, uh, we monitor the blocks that we use um, each year. The grapes are harvested very early in the mornings. Um, they take into, to, into the cellar. Um, we press them, uh, let them settle um, overnight um, in the cold um, as cold as possible. The next day they are racked, we take um, them off with uh, um, some leaves. 10% of the wine, every, everything is naturally fermented. 10% uh, of the wine is, is naturally fermented in older barrels just to help us with the mouthfeel. And the rest is natural, naturally fermented in stainless steel tank. Um, after fermentation, we keep the wine on the lees for as long as possible, um, especially to keep keep the mouthfeel and freshness because for me, freshness is, is everything, and especially these wines. Um, yeah, the wine goes through a very, uh, a very light filtration before working. Yeah, it's, there's really not much to say. I think the quality of the grape speaks for themselves. Uh, for a winemaker, um, using grapes like that for the reason to speak for itself, it's, it's great. So it's actually lazy winemaking. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of hard work goes into it. I would definitely wouldn't call it lazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a customer favorite. This of ours as well, and um, I think it's just amazing hearing how much goes into it as well you know you don't expect a wine that costs this much to have to have the old vine fruit to have any any oak at all to have that kind of treatment it's uh and how do you how do you go about sourcing the grapes as well are they are these long-term term partners that we work with um do, do you want to talk us through that yeah, a bit? Um, um so we work with a, a partner uh, farmers and, and 
um, long-term contract, definitely. Uh, I think, especially uh, in the swart and uh, where everyone is fighting over all bush vines, uh, you need to, to, to keep that um, relationship um, um, something relationships in this world is really uh, important. So it's a long-term partner for use um, every year from basically the same blocks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we've got um, a couple of minutes as well. Um, I know the Shiraz is also um, a very popular wine with, with our customers as well. Um, if you could, yeah, just talk us through, through that one for two minutes for those uh, they don't have it to taste right now, but um, a little bit of in background yeah. on that would be fantastic. So uh, the Shiraz is also from um, a coastal region, but it's not from the Swartland area. So uh, the Shiraz, we tend to, tend to work with different blocks. Some of them will be in the fall area, uh, where you get, you get very good juiciness and, and, um, and ripe berries. From the swart, uh, sorry, from the pole area, and the other is a bit. Well, it's not really pole; it's between pole and swartland. So uh, it's it's different blocks we use, um, but also again, um, partly fermented in 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 uh, natural fermented in barrel, um, doing um, uh, pump over uh, twice a day um, during the fermentation, basically. The harvest is the same as the, as the, as the Chenin Blanc early in the mornings, as cool as we can get to grab in. And yeah, again, natural fermentation, um, putting the wine into, into um, uh, a part in barrel and part in, in status still tank. Yeah, again, laser wine making, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, just one question as well. Where um... Where exactly is the winery based? Where are you right now within South Africa? Yeah. It's a part of a uh, winery we use in the Swartland area. Um, You're in the Swartland itself, yeah. 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 Very good. Um, just see if there's any other questions, but I think, um, are there any plans to adding a pinotage to the range? Well, um, uh, no is the answer right now, but uh, we'll watch this space. We're adding a lot of We've added a lot of new stuff at the moment. Um, and once that wave comes in, who knows Who knows what's next? Um, but we'll see. If there's enough demand for, for Pinotage out there, um, we'll do it uh, for sure. But um, uh, I just want to thanks very much, Rhino. Um, I'll let you get back to get back to the stormy weather out there. Um, um, good. So if everyone has a glass, we can have a taste. And I'll yes. love the comments on that. I'll, I'll have to wait for that. <laughs> um fantastic um yeah let's say thank, thank you very much rhino um lovely to hear a bit bit more about it and it still amazes me like i say how much how much goes into a wine that costs that much i don't don't quite know how you do it or how we do it but but thank you um uh we'll catch up with you again soon and we'll probably move on to our second wine as we've got four to fit in today so fast paced today um but hopefully you're enjoying the the blockhead blockhead shenin um and you can enjoy it for the day now it's opened um but we're going to move on to our second wine today which is the kebonta pina grigio um which i am actually going to try and talk you talk you through um so again, why why are we showing a uh, you know a fighting price Pinot Grigio from Italy? Um, you know, last week we had we had we've had white Priorat, we've had um, seventy year old Bang Garnacha. Um, but hopefully, for those of you who who've tried it and who who know the wine, um, again, we feel genuinely feel this is the best Pinot Grigio you can you can buy at, at this price point. Um, and with Italy as well, we've got we've kind of got family family connections there in a way. So, just to give you a bit more background on on Moreno, Moreno's um, independently owned by partly by two uh, kind of salt of the earth northerners, um, and then thirty percent by a wonderful cooperative called Araldica, based in Piemonte in the northwest um, of Italy. 
and heraldica is made up of about 140 um, members as they call them and these are growers they're, they're family producers um, who come together to again make the best best wine they can really um, and they've been around for in the area for 60 70 years and then around 20 years ago they started um, a project to source wine from from the rest of Italy which they call Adria um, and this is where we we get the Kibonta the range from and we're tasting the Pinot Grigio today um, so so like I say they're, they're part part ownership of, of Marina as well so there's a there's a, you know real connection there to do things do things well and when one does well the other does well um, it's not a you know give 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 or a take 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 relationship we both we work together to to make these wines and at the quality they are and the price we can. Um, and why why do I think Kebonte is the best Pinot Grigio you can buy at this price? So, you know, just to talk you through the process with making this wine, first of all, the, the wine is entirely hand-picked. It's all hand-harvested grapes, and there is great selection that goes on um, at, the, at the winery as well. Uh, the wine is fermented in stainless steel, cool temperature to, to keep that freshness, to keep that kind of... Um, lovely pear, pear drop flavour you get and citrus as well. Um, there's no oak and then it is actually lees age for between three and six months and um, depending on the, the parcel and um, veg and vegan friendly as well too. Now these sound, they sound like standard things but actually at this level that is that is not standard certainly with the, the hand harvesting and the lees aging this is not something you get on an every Pinot Grigio and I, I believe it really shows in the wine as too. I've got a, a glass here with me. Um, you you just get a more you get a more pronounced nose. There's lovely fresh fruits on the nose. I hope everyone's um, uh, seeing that as well as I am. And then with that leaves on the on the palate as well. I believe you just get a more fleshy character with just a touch of creaminess. There's there's just an incredible in, enjoyable character to to, to this wine. Um, and like I say, these just aren't these aren't standard things at this this level as well. Obviously, there are people that, that are doing it, but the majority of um, you know cheap Pinot Grigio just do, doesn't get that kind of love, I believe. Um, in Cabanta as a wine as well, and it's interesting to know how this this came about as well. So Cabanta, first of all, by the way, means um, full of goodness in Piedmontese uh, dialect, I believe, um, and the wine was brought into into the range in response to um, a, a family run wholesaler who who got in touch with us wanting to uh, source a new Pinot Grigio and Pinot Grigio Rosé. Um, I believe that it came off the back of their their previous rosé supplier. Um, had I was quite unstable in colour shall we say it was going brown halfway through the year so obviously that was something they wanted to to rectify um, and they asked us if we had a different supply and to be honest the, the straight answer at the, at the time was no we don't we don't have a Pinot Grigio we don't have a Pinot Grigio Rosé uh, however um, we're looking for one and we we have the connection to do this you know fairly quickly with with the Araldica and Adria tie um, and I guess you can sort of see where the where the story's going but um, we um, yeah we went about sourcing sourcing the juice for it and and developing the label and, and relatively quickly we had a a new Pinot Grigio and Pinot Grigio Rosé under the Cabanta label that um, that the wholesale in question could could run with in their region and we could run with for you know the rest of the country. Um, it was just a win-win situation really. We had um, uh, you know two brand new wines in our portfolio that we that we really wanted and we really needed, and they had a new a new source as well that they could have confidence in would be exclusive to to them in their area. And I think that's something also I wanted to sort of um, touch on with this one as well. And most of our uh, own production, the Made by Moreno stuff as well, um, they're wines that we have complete control of. Um, they're labels we've, we've developed, we've put our, put our time and our efforts into, um, and they're not, gonna, they're not gonna end up in the competitor around the corner. And you know, the worst of all, they're not gonna end up in the supermarket um, because we look after them and Moreno who is still, um, although we've got high, you know, aspirations to to grow, we're still a relatively small company. Um, but we have this um, sort of uh, 
power of scale, if, if, if you like, with, with our partners. So I think it's a really nice uh, position for us to be in and hopefully hopefully I'm doing it justice, conveying how it how it works for you as, as a customer as well. Um, so the wine, I hope you're I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're seeing those extra efforts that have gone that have gone into the wine. Um, like I say, there is a the rose that goes alongside with this as well, Pinot Grigio Rose at the same same price. And then the Cabonta range as well uh, extends beyond that. Um, so we do have two wines from up in Piermont as well. We've got a, a Gavi, of course, um, which is fantastic. And then we've got a Cortese as well, um, um, which is the same price as Pinot Grigio. And then we've also got wine from the south as well, from Puglia, um, which is a lovely Sangiovese as well. Um, I said the Cortese, Sangiovese and two Pinot Grigios all sit at the same price. And the Gavi is obviously um, a little bit more. Um, but less, uh, I don't know if anyone had any questions or um, I don't know if Hamish, if you wanted to, to, to add any more on um, Heraldica or the production, uh, I know you, you probably know it far better than me. Uh, yeah, no, I think you've done a, a, a really good job of sort of explaining, but um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a third generation cooperative in Piemonte uh, who have a fantastic reputation uh, for making good quality wines and working with their partners for over 50 years. So um, yeah, we're, we're pleased to, to not just do, you know, I'm sure we could go out and source cheaper Pinot Grigios if we really wanted to, but actually having a, a Pinot Grigio uh, where we understand the provenance um, and, and where it comes from. And, and like Mike alluded to there, it's nice to do it with um, a company that has a part ownership with us um, because we've, we've both got invested interest to, to make the best quality, best looking, best tasting wine we possibly can. Um, and so hopefully as we go into the future, we can start to expand that range. Um, but yeah, my, Mike was the one that sort of really drove this project, um, you know, and, and um, started two years ago. But uh, immediately it's become one of our biggest sellers as, as a Pinot Grigio is always going to do. Um, but yeah, no, really, really, really proud of it. And um, I think it ticks a lot of boxes for, for those retailers and wholesalers um, the, for, for that holy trinity of, of good quality, good pricing, good label. But yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, definitely. Um, less than, than five quid as well, or, or even four quid if you're uh, looking for a pallet. <laughs> um, Brilliant. So in a moment, hopefully we'll be able to introduce uh, Julien as well, um, who's joining us from the Rhone. Um, and we'll talk us through um, the Cote de Rhone Village as well. I'll tell you what I might do, hopefully he's listening, is actually introduce you to Nick as well. Um, seems, seems a good chance. So Julien, Julien's here as well. Um, good morning, Julien. Um, I think you'd yeah, we are just off mute. Good morning. How are you? Morning. I, I'm fine. Good. Fantastic. Thank you. Very good. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I know you're a busy man too, and you've you've just come back off holiday. Um, but yeah, we're our customers are tasting the Dariod uh, Cote their own village. Um, so I was just wondering if you could, uh, as the winemaker, talk us talk us through the wine a little bit and um, what we can uh, what we can expect. Yes, pleasure. Uh, Cote du Rhône Village Dario, to, just be, before explaining the wine, I, I, I just want to make a quick remember about the, the Valley du Rhône appellation. You start with the Cote du Rhône, it's the, the general level. Uh, up, you have the Cote du Rhône Village. Again, up, you have the village with name. And on the top, you have the crew. <clears throat> Dario Cote du Rhône Village 2017. Uh, uh, for, for, for make this wine, uh, I, I play with different village with name. Uh, and after I declassify it, I select the grape and I declassify it to make uh, uh, Dario 2017. Uh, in example, I can use, I don't want to say exactly my, my recipe, but uh, I, I, I use often a, a Segure village, uh, Sable, sometimes a little bit of massive du show. Why? Because each place has a specificity, uh, has a, a terroir, 
and uh, you can feel that uh, in in the in the wine. In example, Segure, you have a, a, a nice uh, uh, balance of uh, freshness in the wine. Sable, you have a finesse. Uh, Usho, you have a, a garig aromatic, and I play with that uh, to make the Cote Durande village Dario, and I declassify this village to write on the label Cote Durande village, because when you mix two villages uh, with name, you lose the appellation. The blend, it's 80 Grenache, 20 Syrah, because it's the typical variety come from the area. And uh, like that, we have a, a true run aromatic in this wine. And also to rise the complexity, uh, the elegance and the finesse at this wine, I, uh, I adding in barrel 20% of the blend. Uh, it's not to have an oak flavor, but just to rise the complexity and, uh, and help the, the middle of the, of the mouth to have more body. Sorry for my English. I am not fluent in English. I hope you understand well my explain. Uh, a, a quick, Sounds uh, absolutely fine to me. Quick, quick thing, I, I am in Keran in the cellar. Like you can see on, on my back, the press and, and the tank. Okay, you, you have a question? Um, those those uh, those tanks are absolutely beautiful. Actually, I was just a bit mesmerized by them. How big how big are the tanks? Basic question. <laughs> In my bag? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you uh, you have a sixteen thousand liter and a seventy thousand liter just here. It's a little bit more bigger, and uh, uh, you see the the press. It's uh, it looks like old, but it's new. It's, uh, it's, uh, you see, how is it? Yeah, we can see. Yeah. It's a basket press, uh, but a new basket press. We use it that in the past and uh, because it's a quality of, it's a nice quality. And uh, this one is new uh, with a stainless steel uh, and uh, with a, a computer inside because it's not just you, you, you don't have just uh, the top go down to press. It's a, a little bit um, vibration, you can say that in English, uh, and program, sometimes it press hard, sometimes low, etc. Yeah, yeah, controlled. Yeah, very good. Does, it, um, does the blend vary from year to year or is it pretty 80, 20 every year? Oh. It's a, it's a, I, I try to, to keep 80-20. Uh, sometimes you can have a, a small vari variation, maybe 21 or 22. It depends on the, the final blend. But uh, uh, I, I want to, with this cuvee, uh, for, for me, it's the fantastic door to enter in the Rhone Valley, in the high level of, of Rhone Valley. And, uh, if you want to keep the finesse and elegance, Grenache, it's my favorite variety. Yeah. And the fruit, it's, uh, it's added by the Sierra. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, mix with the Carignan and Mourvedre because sometimes you, have a, uh, you lose a little bit the finesse and, uh, and elegance. And uh, I, I focus on this cuvee to have a, a really uh, a wine easy to drink with a run aromatic, with a lot of finesse and elegance, a wine for everybody and to share every meal. It for that I, I play with Grenache and Sierra. And if uh, the vintage, it's maybe a little bit more better for the Sierra, I can add a, a, a little bit uh, more than, than uh, I, I, I adjust with the vintage, but I, I try to be uh, <clears throat> regular vintage after vintage because I think it's important when you when you love uh, when you like sorry a, a cuvee to 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 be not sad uh, when you change the vintage and to recognize uh, the wine vintage after vintage. I think it's important to be regular in our job. Of course, we don't make a Coca-Cola. You have a vintage impact, but uh, uh, keep the style uh, and keep the elegance. Uh, for me, it's uh, very important. Yeah, very good. And it certainly is a very consistent wine as well that you uh, you definitely achieve achieve your goal there. I, I 
um, certain of it. Um, so the way you source the the grapes from the different villages are those um, are those long term partners that we that we work with? We, they... we have a, a long term partners, yeah. a, a long term 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 partners. Sorry, and uh, also uh, I, I am born here uh, in, in this area. Uh, I live more ten years in Segure, and you know uh, uh, when you when you live uh, your life uh, in this area, uh, it's easy to and. And when you when you are a winemaker, it's easy to 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 source the grape and to know uh, the partner where you can build something very serious. Uh, somebody work very well, and we try to be to be uh, uh, regular also with the partner. Uh, always to when I explain that I want to be regular with my blend, uh, I want also be regular with my partner. Uh, to, to have the same style uh, vintage after vintage because uh, uh, each way to work the vineyard can, can have uh, uh, an influence, uh, an impact, sorry, uh, on, the, on the final wine. And if you want to be regular, it's better to have a, 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 a partner, a long time partner. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Julian, a couple of questions that have just come in. Um, you're, are you in Kehran uh, right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. And I was actually uh, wondering if you could very briefly just talk us through uh, the, the Kehran wine as well, that's uh, the Darod Kehran. Um, just very briefly what goes into that wine um, and how that's made. Is that okay? Uh, I, 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 I'm not uh, very well understand your question. You speak about terroir? No, the, the, Keran, the Keran wine, Terroir uh, yeah. Keran. So someone's just asked a question in the Q&A, um, uh, just if we could have um, a quick summary of how you make the Keran wine. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I make the Keran wine here in this cellar. Uh, Keran, it's a crew. It's another level uh, than uh, Cote Durand village. Uh, you, 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 some, some will change a, a little bit uh, with the crew. Uh, in example, you, you need to pick the grape by hand. Uh, another rule, this is a specific rule to Keran. Uh, another important rule in, in Kiran, I think it's important to know the sulfur level in the wine, it's uh, similar than organic wine. This is a, a, a difference. Uh, I think it's uh, alone uh, true on the Rhone Valley with this rule. And also you, the yield, it's more real. Uh, how I make the Kiran, uh, the, I can show you quickly the cellar if you want if uh, it's correct for the connection. The grape arrived by this way. And uh, during the season, we have a, a forklift. Uh, and uh, with this uh, white belt on my back uh, and the distilling machine on the top, uh, we distill the grape and the berry arrive uh, by, by in the tank by the top. And after we start the fermentation in the natural yeast, of course, in Keran. Uh, to respect the maximum the terroir. Uh, and we, we fermented in stainless steel tank and oak tank, like, on, like you can see on my back. The fermentation starts after two or three days, naturally. And uh, during the fermentation, like a, a, a classic way, uh, same to Lekoto, we do the pumping over morning and evening. Pumping over is when you pump the juice on the back on the tank and you pump back the juice by the top. Why we do that? Uh, we do that to, to extract, uh, because during the fermentation, uh, the, the juice uh, get uh, the juice, the sugar get alcohol, and during this transformation, the juice is sparkling, and uh, 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 the juice is sparkling, and the the the, the, the fermentation create uh, a, a sparkling, and the gas one go outside the tank, and to go outside the tank only way way by the top, and when this gas go outside, it touch all the skin uh, on the top of the tank. And you have, like we call in, in France, a gâteau de mar, a cake of skin. And it's inside the, the skin that you have the color and the tannin. And to extract the color and the tannin, 
we do the pumping over. Uh, in Kiran specifically, we do also the pigeage. Pigeage is when you patch down the, the cap of skin with a, a pijou. I don't have it here, but um, if you visit me, I, I, I will be very happy to, to show you. Uh, and uh, when, uh, uh, just a, a quick, uh, quick thing on the extraction, you need to be gentle with the extraction. It's not easy. Uh, you need test and judge uh, if you do that a long time or a short time. It depends the vintage. Uh, if you work so a lot of, you can extract so hard tannin and it will be not good for, for the testing. After 10 days, the fermentation finish. We pump the juice, take off the skin, press on the basket press in my back. After we blend the pressed juice and the free run juice and waiting the second fermentation, malolactic fermentation, it's made not with the yeast, but with the bacteria and the high acid get low acid. In every red wine, you have this fermentation. And after that, a racking and the wine is ready for long aging or for testing and bottling in, in, in few months. Lovely. Thank you very much, Julian. Um, yeah, I, could, I could I could listen to you all day, um, and we do well. We do hope to visit at some point when we're when we're allowed to, um, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, I don't think I, there was just one question. I know you produce a lot of a lot of different labels, uh, but someone was just thinking how many um, how many bottles you produce. I guess. Um, I guess it'd be more it'd be more relevant for the for the Keran actually. How many bottles overall do you? Produce? I, I prefer speaking in hectolitre. Uh, for me, yeah. it's more easy. Yeah. So we, we we here in Keran, I produce thousand hectolitre of wine. One hectolitre, it's hundred litre. I, I let you uh, make the the conversion in in bottle. Um, I, th I think it's about thirteen thousand, but I'm doing that really. Really quickly on my phone. So, <laughs> um, a lot though, thirteen thousand. If that's right. Yes, it's beginning to be to be correct. It's beginning to be correct. Yeah. Yeah. And right. just uh, just very quickly, uh, Julian, is uh, have you figured out what the perfect food pairing is with your wines? Uh, with uh, uh, the Côte du Rhône village. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for me. Um, all the meat will be will be okay. Uh, in, in one thing to, to, to share well uh, the 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 Kiran, uh, the Lekoto 2017. May, maybe uh, une, uh, in French we say une dobe aux carottes. I let you translate. Because I have no word to, to say that in English, uh, sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, look on the internet, you know, dub, and uh, and you 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 will see uh, what what is a real word in English. Sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Julian, our our French is uh, a million times worse than your English, um, and uh, I, I, for someone who doesn't speak English very well, I, I thought you did pretty fantastically there. <laughs> So, uh, so thank you, thank you very much. Um, we'll uh, we'll leave you to it. Thank you, thank you so much for your time, Julian. Thank uh, you. Like I say, hope, hope to see you there soon. See you soon. Bye bye. Th thanks, Julian. Bye. Um, and I'm very uh, pleased to actually just hand this uh, hand over to uh, the fantastic Mr. Nick Groshek now as well. Um, so a lot of you may have. Uh, I've, I've dealt with Nick over, over phone or email. Um, he he is the oracle with him right now. Um, I'm going to embarrass him by saying, um, and he's just going to uh, talk us through a bit of a bit of a bit of a tasting note, maybe on the Dural Côte d'Arun village and some exciting plans we have for the range over the next uh, next couple of months as well. So, introducing Mr. Mr. Nick. Thank you, thank you, Mike. Um, I think the, the, one of the things that, that Julia says almost almost underplays, I think, the the quality you get from from specifically the the Cote de Rhone Village. You know, uh, usually a Cote de Rhone Village is 
it's a you know a best best cuvées of some of the wines that don't quite make the same standard that go into the into the named village wines. It's the it's the, the lesser quality grapes that end up in the in the Cote de Rhone or the or the Cote de Rhone village blends. And and what this wine does is actually turn that on its head, where they've actually gone out and sourced some of the some of the best fruit, which which Julianne spoke about. You know, going to the you know some of the seventeen different villages. Um, in the Rhone Valley that they're able to choose from and, and taking some of those um, best examples from Sable and Segare um, with those small, um, you know, those small parcels of that barrel aged quality that really um, enlivens the wine and gives it that, um, that star quality that, I mean, I'm sure you've all opened the bottle now and you, as soon as you put it in the glass, you can smell and you can taste that it's, it's, it's going to be something that is, I think, a cut above your average, your average Rhone wine. I mean, at this price point, I think we, you know, something that Mike and Rhino alluded to in his presentation as well. You're talking about wines that, that they're not costing the earth, and these are all wines that are over delivering on on quality and flavour and profile that um, that we're really lucky to have the the opportunity to to be a part of and be able to bring this wine. Wine into the UK, and, um, and for me, this this the Rhone Village is a is a prime example of that. And you get this uh, the ripe the ripeness and the roundness of it. You, you get immediately when you when you stick your nose in the glass. It it almost jumps out straight at you. This sort of red, red and and, and blue foot blue fruits, blueberries, raspberries, ripe plums, and alongside that, you get that classic that classic Rhone spice and earthy notes as well. Which I think is something that you you don't always get with with Cote de Rhone Village. I think it's, it's fair to say, yeah. and uh, I think the tasting of it for me as well just enhances what you've already had on the uh, had when you when you've smelt it. You get that again that rich juiciness. There are, there are very fine tannins there, but it's it's got this great freshness and this juicy acidity, which I think really makes the wine. Um, sink when it goes in your mouth and, and Julianne talks about it going with all sorts of different foods and I think that's that's the beauty of of any Rhone wine I think if you've ended, ever spent any time in France Cote de Rhone wine is that wine you take round when you go for dinner um, that is that reliable friend that you always go back to and although I think this is exactly that it it's that reliable friend that goes that one step further um, and I think this is this is a, a brilliant example of what a um, a Cote de Rhone village can do when when in the right hands, and I'm sure you've all hopefully tried that now and, and would agree. And going back to what uh, Mike said earlier about expanding the range, we've we've had the the Cote de Rhone village and the Karen in our portfolio now for a couple of years. We've changed the label around, made it look a, a bit smarter, and we're now at the point where we need to introduce the, sort of the next stage of development. So we're bringing in. Um, Julien also does a, a Cote de Rhone white and a Cote de Rhone rosé, which we're in the process of um, finalising the details of the bottling, which should be uh, in the next three, three or four weeks. So we're hoping when the spring, when everything starts to open up, we'll have a have a fantastic Cote de Rhone, Cote de Rhone Village Blanc uh, and a Cote de Rhone Village rosé to, to bring into the range. Um, and that will really round out um, the fantastic quality that, that Julien is able to, able to offer and it will flesh out our Cote de Rhone offering for, for Moreno as well. So, so please do watch this space. Pricing, uh, I think you'll see is in the prices that was sent around yesterday. So you can see again, they, they all come in at a, a really competitive price point. Um, and yet, yeah, as soon as those wines are in, we'll let you know we'll be, be able to get samples sent out as soon as we can. Fantastic. Thanks, thanks very much, Nick. Yeah, I know I'll, I'll be getting through a fair few of those rosés over the, over the summer and the white, but uh, particularly looking to... Looking forward to opening the rosé on the first sun, sunny day of summer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, look at that bang on time as well, quarter to quarter to twelve. Uh, just going to throw it over to to the other pillar of Moreno as well, uh, Mr. Hamish Robertson, who is going to just talk to us about um, the healing coup, um, which hopefully people got notice of uh, last week has has now arrived, um, and makes the first Australian uh, wine addition to our portfolio as well. Um, so I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Hamish. Just um, just before I begin, um, a word on that winery in Quran. It's 
it's um it's an absolute wicked place to visit it's um it's very much a a, a micro winery um and alongside it is a, a gorgeous little eight bedroom regit and a swimming pool and then uh 20k away is Mont Ventoux um and you're about an hour and a half from um Montpellier so it's a super easy place to to go and visit so if anyone's happy to drive a bit of volume behind those wines um I'm sure we could arrange a a few days by the swimming pool um doing some pigeage for uh Julien he loves getting you in the tank stamping down on those grape skins um so on to um the healing coup project uh, which is this wine. So like Mike says, this is our first um, Australian wine in our range. Um, it comes with um, a little bit of a story, a bit of a background on why we've launched it, which is the reason I'm wanting to talk about it is because it's a bit of a personal um, project of, of mine um, that I've sort of uh, forced upon the Moreno team. But um, so when I, uh, my father, uh, used to run a wine company uh, in Scotland, um, in Edinburgh, um, called Irvin Robertson Wines. And um, I guess that's how I, I first got into wine. He he recommended that I went and started with Majestic Wine to get my WSCT and so on. But before any of that happened, he took me to the Australian Wine Fair in in Edinburgh. And the first wine I, I, I properly enjoyed was, was a wine called uh, BMW. Um, from McLaren Vale, and that's uh, both them, Merrill and Willis, the cricketers, who made a wine, and it was a Cab Sauve and just incredibly fruit forward, juicy McLaren Vale wine, as you can imagine. Um, but it was at that uh, wine show, my dad um, introduced me to um, a winemaker and a winery called Angus the Bull, and he um, brought on board that agency in Scotland. It might be a, a, a wine you're familiar with. Let me just quickly share my screen to make you aware of it. Um, so hopefully that's showing up now. Um, so this is Angus the Bull. Now this was a wine that my dad uh, was very proud to have been the first importer into the UK of. And <clears throat> um, it was very, very successful um, be because of the sort of the 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 name, the connotations to Scotland, it took off really uh, in the on trade and in retail. Um, when my uh, father uh, passed away, um, the, the business that he was running got sold to um, another Edinburgh wine merchant called Wine Importers. Now, um, Wine Importers, having spoken to them quite recently, um, admitted that the reason they purchased my father's wine business was for the agency of Angus the Bull. Now, um, randomly a couple of years ago, I, I met with wine importers to, to have a discussion about doing business with them. And uh, we got talking and actually the agency of Angus the Bull um, had moved to Matthew Clark because they had bigger aspirations to drive more volume. Um, and wine importers obviously wanted to drop it because it was going to uh, be uh, plastered everywhere. Um, so that, that didn't really suit them. So it got us thinking about doing a collaboration. And as Moreno want to, um, wanted to expand their uh, Australian um, production. And again, we've got ties with a winery in Australia. We've got a winemaking team who um, go out to Australia, uh, led by uh, a lady called Samantha Bailey who goes and does the, the blending and does the quality control um, with the winery in Australia, um, we decided to use that, uh, that, that wine, that juice, um, to make the healing coup. Now, I was obviously really keen to call it Hamish the Cow, but um, thankfully the team sort of um, put my ego in check and, um, and uh, us and wine importers who uh, Edinburgh wine importers who were collaborating with on this project came up with the label and came up with the name Healing Coup. So just something quite fresh, something relatively premium. But um, I, I think the uh, the main thing about this wine is uh, is the style. It's really opulent, really juicy, really uh, just just really enjoyable to be honest. 
Um, it's uh, it's very Aussie uh, Shiraz, um, which is which is exactly what we wanted it to do. So, um, like Mike alluded to, this this uh, this arrived a week ago um, into the UK. Uh, we've now uh, split the, the the volumes between us and, and wine importers, so they're going to be looking after Scotland, and we're going to be selling the wine in in England and Wales. Um, and yeah, just just really keen to 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 get behind our, our first sort of Aussie Aussie wine, really. Um, so, just a wee bit more about um, about the wine is this comes from a winery called uh, Andrew Peace Wines in uh, in Australia. Uh, they're based in Central Victoria, which I mean, we've got to be quite honest about these things and the fact that it's a it's a big winery. Um, it's one of the biggest family-owned run wineries in Australia, um, which which helps us command the the, the price point and 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 get it for a, a really sort of sharp price. Um, they're on the flats of Victoria, so you know there's no coastal influences. It's very much a continental warm climate, which helps us achieve the ripeness and the fruit that we are sort of looking for. Um, the the wine spends. Um, you know, four months uh, on oak staves. You know, we're not talking about barrels here because that would then be a little bit too expensive. Um, having said all that, they're, they're also very environmentally conscious. So, um, you know, they reuse all their water. Uh, the winery is powered by solar panel, you know, and, and things like this. So it is still very sustainable, which, which is fantastic to, to hear. And it's also lovely to have it still in the, in the sort of family business run by Catherine, the third generation. Um, and, and, and still Catherine's obviously the person we're speaking to um, putting this wine together, sorting the blend out and then sorting the bottling out as well. So this was a project that started just over 12 months ago and now it's sort of manifested itself in a bottle and it's next to me now, which um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mega proud of because it's sort of, um, uh, it started from Angus the Bull that my 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 dad you know brought in in two thousand and three, and now it's it's personally I think a a better label and uh, I can guarantee much better quality liquid. That's uh, called something slightly different, but but I'm 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 pretty confident it's gonna it's gonna work. So yeah, that's that's Angus. Um, sorry, that's the healing coup. So if if anyone wants samples, please, please just shout and we'll send it out with your next orders. I think a few people have seen us talk about it on Instagram uh, or, or seen the email mail out. So they might have already had a sample, but but please do shout if you if you want to try the wine. Um, I can assure you it's uh, it's delicious. Has anyone got any questions? Uh Pre a preemptive question here: Will we be seeing more wines in in the Q range? I I hope so. Uh, looking at other other uh, looking at other wines we've got access to from Andrew Peace, um, there's there's potentially the opportunity for a white or or a different grape variety. Um, this this one's a Shiraz um, with with a splash of Mataro or Mavedra in it, um, which just brings a bit of complexity. But I can definitely see you know potentially a Chardonnay uh, would, would be a nice fit to our range uh, or a Sem so um, uh, blends could could potentially work but we'll see how how it goes down with with this yeah absolutely um, and there's one other that I'll uh, I'll field as well which relates to Australia and own production um, uh, a lot of you out there may know as well we're not just adding one uh, one Australian wine to to the range to start with. We're starting th with three, um, and we've got a Chardonnay coming in called Akura, and then a straight Shiraz called Jammy Monkey. Uh, they have now been bottled, um, so we're hoping they're going to be with us. And I should say that they're, um, they're bottled at our um, own production facility in in France, where they go through their final adjustments and things like that. So it's not a 12 week wait, they're not bottled in Australia, it's actually more like a two or three week wait. So, um, but you will be notified as, as soon they, as they arrive as well. Um, we're very excited about those as well. Um, so unless there was any other questions, I think um, uh, I think that's, that's 
kind of it really i'd, I'd just um just like to say i hope you've hope everyone has enjoyed the, the last four weeks again if you like i said at the top if you uh if you missed any of them um let us know they are all recorded and we can um we can start at least in, in your own time with samples um i i think we'll be doing these again although it would be much preferable to to get some physical uh face-to-face -face tastings in first when uh when things open up again fingers crossed that's that's not longer not too long now and i'll get a haircut as well i'm desperate for one of those um yeah unless there's anything you wanted to to add hamish i'd uh uh, I, I um, just want to reiterate what you've said. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. We've had a really fantastically positive response, which has been really, really kind. Obviously, we're a little bit limited on, on how much we can contact you, and we'd love to be having these um, glasses of wine face-to-face -face, um, as, as per normal. So I really uh, appreciate you having the, the patience to, to go through these tastings with us. But you know from a from a personal point of view it's just been brilliant catching up with our producers to set these up um you know it's been brilliant getting your opinions on the wines um so yeah no really really happy but but thank you all so much um and and mike as well thanks very much for leading these it's been uh you've done it very very well very professionally uh, cheers mate it's uh no, it's been fun and yeah quick final thanks to uh to nick for organizing in all the producers and Harry who's um got us through uh glitch free in terms of technology as well. Uh so thanks very much everyone. Cheers and we will see you soon.